Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Bodice Tipplers. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we discuss Danielle Steele's message from Nam. Um, so there's nothing sexually gross here, but it is a war book. Uh, it is specifically not a Vietnam War book, but an Americans of Vietnam War book. So expect it to be racist in that particular way that it's careful not to use like racial slurs by people we like, but that there is only one named Vietnamese character and she dies horribly. It also has nice white lady racism, which you might not be expecting from this book, as in there's a fucking mammy. This book was written by a Karen. This book is written by a fucking Karen, and I hated it. That's my trigger warning, is I hate this book, so get ready for a fucking wild ride as I talk about nice white ladies trying to solve the fucking Vietnam War and racism in the South and white splaining the civil rights movement to people of color. This is the white moderate that Dr. King warned you about. I fucking hate this book. <laughs> So, on that note, hey, y'all. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I am good. Like, I'm glad that this book is over. <laughs> and I just, you know what? Like, I'm really proud of my restraint because I wanted to throw it in the fucking fire because it's cold here a couple times. Like, I was like, Kinlan, let's get rid of this. And but it, I didn't. It is, um, it is hefty, too, so it would have burned. I know, it would have yeah. burned. But you know what? Like, I feel like if it had burned, it would have just been like a blonde woman, like, Coming out of like it would have been like tears. A, it would have been like, tears. like a Harry Potter when they have the little like you know your anti Patronus no the heart you know when they could talk through the heart oh, whatever the fuck yeah, that's yeah, called yeah. I'm like this is like the opposite of your somebody's Patronus somebody's gonna talk yeah. like somebody's gonna be like that's called the blah 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 I don't really care like you know when like Floop? I don't know that's when yeah, you go when somewhere yeah when like talk to them in the heart oh you are gonna add us flu calls flu calls right no no the flu powder is how you travel I don't care anyway I feel like <laughs> that what would have happened is just some bl- want blonde woman would have come and explained business to me you know like i hate this book anyway i am doing well so what have you been reading um well uh i'll tell you that after we talk about yes yeah we have some really freaky you guys we are you are all fucking amazing we are kicking ass on patreon we are at we have met our first like several funding goals yeah you guys are so later on we will be recording our Playing a babysitter club game. Mm-hmm. That's the one we chose. And then we also have to pick a Sweet Valley High book. And we'll yep. put up a poll about the Sweet Valley High books. You know, if we want to do the first one or the one with murder, there's the murder one. Ooh. See, I only um, read one or two of those. Was okay. I did yeah, not realize. I, I, I hated that. Jessica Wakefield so much, but we're going to do it for y'all. And just kicking ass like we're like $47 a month I mean that's amazing well and the cool thing is that uh, without requiring you to do anything we drop some cool oh, members yes. only specials on you that if you are a Patreon mm-hmm. member and you have not enjoyed these I recommend that you yes. do so we're calling it oral sex oral sex let's talk about or let's listen to oral sex so we're getting some of our podcast favorites some of our podcast boyfriends as I like to call them um, and girlfriends who are generously don- donating their vocal talents to read some of the racier scenes in books that we have read. Just the dirty parts. Just the dirty parts. And the best part is we're giving them no context. So our first one was Cooking with Grief, um, which is an amazing podcast. You should look for them, Cooking with Grief, on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. It's a comedy podcast. And Chris Squared, Chris and Chris, read from the Ivory Key, and they had no idea that it was about ghost fucking. No, it's no great. Clue. It's amazing. Um, our next one was Henry from the Firestarters podcast, and that podcast is where they break down all of the references in Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. So Firestarters podcast, wherever you look for podcasts. Henry gives his vocal talents to um, <laughs> Sandra <laughs> Kitts, Adam and Eva, and it almost killed Sarah. It's it, He does voices, and I, I, I we can't tell them more than that because I mean, you really like, have to... Find What's out interesting is like forty percent of it, like you're getting into, you're like, all right, yeah, this is like this is got this like charming, like Irish accent, and then all of a sudden these insane voices <laughs> happen. It's amazing, um, and so we have some other really great ones lined up for you. So again, y'all, a dollar a month, like that's less than two, 
you know, milkshake drinks at Starbucks, so. And where can you do that? Or if you've already given, where can you go look at your, um. It's, uh, patreon.com slash bodice tipplers. That's right. Or you can also find it on our website, bodice tipplers.com. Look for the big ass Patreon. And I'm always like pouring us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, so. But we do actually give you something for your money now. Yes, we do. Because these are funny. We have, and we've also, um, kind of played with our levels a little bit so it's cheaper for you to show us love yeah and you get more stickers more stickers so many stickers so that's what's going on kind yeah. of with our patreon we're kind of gangbusters on the patreon yeah i know i'm so proud of you guys Yay. You're so like us. thank you for liking us so what are we drinking we are drinking oh god we're drinking smoking loon because it's a vietnam war every smokes right i don't know I, I, this book almost made me start smoking again like that's how much i hate it i'm so it. disappointed in you yeah, like, well, almost. I, I didn't. I didn't. You know, I might go find some of these like <laughs> Shanghai Cools or whatever the fuck they're, smoke, they're smoking. In Rosies or something. I, I, they I they say what they are. Emerald gems or something. <laughs> well, I uh, I got Menage a Trois because this is our first book where there's three dudes. <clears throat> there, there, yeah. never, we've had two dudes before, but we've never had three. We have never dudes. had three dudes. And the thing that you should be aware of in this book is that Paxton. Yeah, that's her name. Ugh, Paxton. Everybody she touches, everybody she comes into contact with, certainly everybody who lusts after her long golden legs. Fucking dies this in book Vietnam. Is like the worst. Oh god. Anyway, so so just FYI, that's what's going on in that book. Do you have yes. a corkscrew? Let's open up some of this shit. Well, we have the smoking lid open. We can. Oh, we do. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. We so, can do that. all right. So, what are you reading? Um. Well, it's kind of funny. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. I did not. I'm not like doing like a Vietnam thing. You're just on a like Vietnam. Tour. I'm not. I'm not because I, I will tell you when I am. Like for a while there, I was into only um, adaptations of Tam Lin, and it got real weird. So it's not like that. That's a very Sarah thing. I know. It's a very Sarah thing. Um, <laughs> and for a while there, I did westerns because of uh, Red Dead Redemption too, and I oh, yeah, wow. it was insane. But no, um, so I, uh, you know, I'm forty. This is a four for forty. Four for forty. And um, I, uh, being that age, uh, we never made it that far in any history class I ever took because I keep making history, and we always run out of time. Yeah. Like right around uh, Martin Luther King. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I feel that I don't know nearly as much as I need to about the Vietnam War, so I always need something to knit to. So I've been knitting to the Ken Burns Vietnam War thing. <laughs> I know, I know, it's weird. No, but, that's um, cool. And, and so, coincidentally, I had um, uh, put on hold ages ago, because I have, like, like, this enormous hold list at the library. It's staggered. It comes in at all kinds of crazy times. It's still way too many books, and I'll just, like, send a whole bunch back. But this book called Sorrow of War by Bao Nin, um, and it's a, he was a, um, an NVA soldier uh, who's written this book, which was banned in Vietnam for years. Um, it's quite, I'm only halfway through, but it's really good so far. I only realized last night watching the last episode of the Ken Burns thing that the dude in the Ken Burns Vietnam thing, that, like, that there's a guy and he's got this amazing like frosted like rockabilly hair thing going, but he's an NVA uh, veteran. Uh, that's him! Like, <laughs> that he's the author. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's what's going on in my, my reading world right now. Well, I'm not reading anything because I have been sucked into nonsense. And y'all, I don't know if I'm ever going to escape it. I feel like I've not been sucked into anything like this since Battlestar Galactica. And you, you assholes all know what I'm talking about. Like, when Battlestar Galactica got put on Netflix, like, it was all you watched for, like, Two weeks straight, and you stayed up all hours. So, I don't even know how... I don't, and you hate space. I do hate space. Um, I mean, I love the shit that Roslyn... Like, Roslyn was just like, ba-bam! Airlocking people. Like, that's my favorite move. Like, you get if, sucked into it, right? If I was going to be a space dictator... Oh, airlocks all Oh, my God. Airlock all fucking day long. So, I don't even know how I got into this. And, like, here's the thing. I don't even like explaining shit to me. Like, I have watched some Korean dramas, like, where the guy is really terrible to the fucking girl, and, like, I just get annoyed at it. And so I was just like, on my Netflix, I was like, hey, hey, Courtney, hey, hey, girl, hey, you should watch this, this, this dumb shit thing called Tennis Prince. And I was like, okay, why not? This is some weird Chinese thing. And now I'm staying <laughs> up till 5 a.m. watching this thing. It's got 40 fucking episodes. And I'm like, I started this this week, this week. And I am like. I've got like six more episodes and I can't fucking stop. And all it is is just like really cute Chinese dudes playing tennis, loving each other. And it's like I'm obsessed. And 
Jen, who is one of our Patreons and also on Twitter, she's like, yeah, you're watching the gateway to like sports and <laughs> manga. And I'm like, oh God. So I feel like this could be a very niche thing for me. Like, and I will tell you, when I was 12 years old, 11, 12 years old and a fucking dork, like with my mom haircut and my mom jeans and my Tevas with socks. The things that like got me through shit that I loved the most were Shag the Movie, Newsies, and Sister Act 2. Those three things. If I had had this at my disposal, I don't know what kind of person I would be. So you obviously did not go through the college phase that me and many of my friends went to, where we got really into very obscure anime fan subs that had large yaoi fanfic followings. No, basically, oh, like you went to an all girl school, and I was just like, like we have talked about on this podcast many times. Like I was basically flashing my boobs and making out. With See, people. what you didn't know is that you could be doing that and also <laughs> enjoying. Like, deep into canon, Weitzkreutz. Oh, my God, dude. I don't even want to talk were you, about Were you also, like, flashing people and making out? Uh, you never no. talked about your flashing days. Like, no, I didn't have any flashing days. I was kind of like, do y'all remember, do you remember Kitty from <laughs> the, the Arrested Development? Where she's like, say hello to these. Like, it was kind of that. <laughs> Honestly, until, like, um, until I, I gained, like, a lot more weight in my 30s, there really wasn't a lot to flash. Yeah, no. But yeah, like, like, what's that boy doing taking her shirt off? If this had been accessible to me, <laughs> I would have become one of those people that, like, all of... Like, if the internet and shit had been accessible to, like, 12-year-old Courtney, all of my muscles would have atrophied, and I would have just been this pale lizard thing. Check. That, like, lived in Check. the basement. Yes. Like, you that, would have owned a wall scroll? Is what you're saying? I don't know what that is. Okay, well, you would. <laughs> you would know that. <laughs> but, like, I am super invested in this dumb shit. Like, that's what I'm really, like... I don't want to talk about this book. I want to talk about the golden partners that <laughs> obviously want to fuck each other and they cannot and they're separated and I need them to get back together, Sarah. <laughs> I need the little one and the big one that's soft for the little one to get back together. Like, I'm I'm like, oh my God, can we just get through this so I can go back and watch and see what happened? Like the captain and the genius guy and his arms broken. What the fuck? So that's where I am. <laughs> That's the headspace that I No, I completely understand that headspace. I mean, right I have now. not been in that headspace for a long time. Oh, my God. There was a time with Gundam <laughs> Wing, I got to tell you. Trey's and Zach's, girl. It was, I know you don't know what I'm talking no, about. No, it's like. But you would. It was like foreign language They were today. hot. So, yeah. This is my, I feel like, but I feel like with the sports thing, I kind of love it more because it's just. I love an athletic dude that just loves another athletic dude. <laughs> like, that's, that's, I like, at 40, I have finally found it. Like, <laughs> well, I'm glad you finally like, found it. <laughs> sensitive sports bros loving each other is basically how you could defeat me. Like, if we were in, like, some kind of, like, real-world risk situation, <laughs> you're just like, I'm just going to throw some tennis boys at her, and she'll watch their drama unfold. Oh, like, like the kind of, like, wizard fight where you shape change into things? Like that? Well, the best part, too, is, like, they all have tennis moves. <laughs> okay, and, like, of course they do. One's got one, like, the, the beefy one. There's a beefy one who wears a bandana. He's got a move called the boomerang snake. It's the boomerang snake. And then the genius guy's got one called, like, growling bear and soaring eagle. And then he's got a secret one. I was like, this is the gayest thing, and I love it so much. So... Yeah, that's my head. No, I completely get it. Uh, that's my fucking head. I, I would, I would start uh, watching it knitting, but it's really hard to knit with subtitles. No, it is true. Yeah, yeah. You gotta. So. Yeah. I mean, unless it's like TV knitting, and I've been like doing hard ass cables lately. I don't. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. I don't know if that that's okay. Either. You don't. You don't have to know. <laughs> so the reason why we read this book, Sarah's I'm sorry. Hungry. No, it's fine. This was the first Daniel Steele book I ever well, read. I actually did get it off my Aunt Laverne's bookshelf because I ran out of books. And we talked about this in a previous podcast. And this is the one that I I, I got. This may, I'm not sure if it was my first romance because I think I had read like Victoria Holt, that kind of thing. Yeah. My first romance romance. Dude, I get it because I think, again, in ways to make ourselves feel fucking old, my nieces, one of my nieces who's, she just turned 17, went through this period where she was obsessed just hang with me for a second. She was obsessed with 9-11. Because for her, like, that was the thing that, like... It was weird and adult and, um, yeah. and tragic and, yeah. And so, like, you like know... Like, the, the Vietnam War the, was... The end us, of the Vietnam yeah. War, like, for me, like, you know, for, for you, it ended six years before you were born. You know, five years. For me, it ended, like, four years uh-huh. before I was born. So it's like, 
were really close to it. And when we grew up, there was um, a, 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 a national obsession with films yeah. that were, quite frankly, like this book, nowhere near as complex as they needed to be and had this extremely American viewpoint. What really impressed me, honestly, about the Ken Burns thing is that one of the first voices you hear is a, is a Vietnamese voice, yeah. which you, we never got. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, like, Barry Pepper made his money, like, being dirty and crying in slow motion and, like, Vietnam mm. movies. Like, and again, I will watch Barry Pepper cry all day long because <laughs> that motherfucker can cry. Yeah, you're right. You're so, right I mean, that. I get it. I get Okay. I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah. No, I feel I, like this, like, this fine. weird obsession. Because remember, we always have, like, 60s Day. Yes. It's, it's like, Spirit Week. Yeah. And, like, people would have their dad's, like, flak jackets and, like, the combat boots. Because we were young enough that Vietnam vets were not old. No. They were. They were now, it's old. weird to me because, like, yeah. in my brain, they are the same age as they yeah. were when we were kids. And they are not. They're old now. Yeah. Like, um, but, yeah, to me, they're, like, well, younger than my dad. Yeah. Like, they were my dad's age. And, like, and the 60s were cool. Except that, like, your parents, like, depending on the age they were, I had old parents. What's wild is my dad got, like, pulled up for the draft board, and we'll talk about this, and, like, he went, and the guy that was working knew him, and put him in the National Guard. I, that's not an uncommon story. Yeah, but, think. like, you yeah. know, like, I mean, it's kind of crazy to Yeah, it's that, that kind of randomness and yeah. that kind of, like, good old boy network and that kind of thing was But, like, very I mean, like, you know, when we go over, like, whenever we go to D.C., like, my dad's got, like, guys that were he were in college with, like, that were his best friends that died over there. So it's, like, this very, very real... Yeah. Like, we're, like... Like, there's a 10,000 Maniacs song about mm-hmm. it that was on the same, like, uh, you know, one is, like, Hateful Hate and Eat for Two. Yeah. Like, you know, Alice in Chains the Rooster is yeah. about Jerry Cantrell's dad. So our, we there, were so. still in a... Vietnam yeah. was, like, close to us at the yeah. time. But yet also highly mythologized at the same time. Yeah. Um, I mean, my parents were actually too old. My parents, um... My dad did not think much of Dirty Hippies. My dad never forgave Jane Fonda. Oh, my God. Oh my, my, dad, God. my dad has still never forgot. Given Do her not say, I mean, he's dead. Is it, my dad is always <laughs> like, my dad with his deep Tennessee accent is always like, Hanoi Jane. Nope. Yeah, like, yeah, Hanoi Hanoi Jane. So. I can feel like my dad, like right now, there's a rotisserie <laughs> in the ground because I said Jane Fonda and yeah. didn't spit and call her oh Hanoi God, Jane. Right, yeah. uh, like, of, of the generation that, that, um, that was, I guess, the silent majority that Nixon yeah. used to talk about. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's a very strange mm-hmm. thing for people our age. And I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe 9-11 is a good parallel. But so to me, yeah, it just seemed like, like a very adult yeah. book. And the funny thing about war stuff is that the books are always light years ahead of the movies in terms of complexity yeah. and interest, like, you know. I don't know. I mean, again, I found this. I a, not I, this book. I read this book when I was, yeah, or you read this book when you were 13, but this book is. No, this book is like a movie. This book yeah. is like a Vietnam movie in that it's like, uh, it's about Americans in Vietnam. It's yeah. not about Vietnamese people. I don't people. know. Like, there's movies like still, It's not though. subtle. It thinks it's being like real woke and subtle is the thing that's annoying it. about it. But, yeah. If it would just like drop the racial slurs there's all the still, time, then it wouldn't be as there's offensive There's fucking like way. movies that like handle this shit better and like yeah. basically talk about, I mean like Platoon is fucking... Like, basically about somebody, like, because you're left to your own fucking devices going crazy. Like, you know, it's not, like, saying everybody was perfect and shit. But it's still not as, like, um, I I think that, like, the more, like, the things I carried, for example, is a really good, like, you know, argument that... That there, there's usually a long time before you can make a movie that's truly complex and about everything about a war, you can write a book about it. Yeah. I've met, I've met Tim O'Brien, I've not met Daniel Steele. Here's the thing about it, like, for those of you who know me... I hate the movie Forrest Gump. <laughs> I, I loved it. it back in the day, but now I'm an adult. I, I realize, like, oh, it's it. terrible. Oh, Jenny's my God. Jenny's a piece of shit. For as much as I hate Forrest Gump, if you were to be like, Courtney, you have to choose. Reading this book again or watching Forrest Gump, I'm going to watch Forrest Gump. Because for as racist and <laughs> terrible as Forrest Gump is, this is worse. It's similar in that, like, it's she just happens to be there for That's everything. Worse. I hate it. Okay, all right. Uh, let's let's, read, the, like, let's yes. read the back cover and tell people what the fuck it's about. Okay, so Danielle Steele's Message from Nam came out in 1990. This is her, I think, 25th book. Um, and it it got roasted on, like, Publishers Weekly and I stuff like that. I think this like, may be her attempt to do a more serious yeah, book. Yeah, it was. It was like, yeah. some, okay. All right, so message from Nam. As a journalist, Paxton Andrews would experience Vietnam firsthand. We follow her from Savannah to Berkeley and then to Saigon. For the soldiers she knew and met there, Vietnam would change their lives in ways they could never have imagined. Peter Wilson, fresh from law school, was a new recruit who could 
would confront his fate in Tanang. <laughs> Ralph Johnson, yeah. a seasoned AP correspondent, had been in Saigon since the beginning. He knew Vietnam and the war inside out. Bill Quinn, captain of the Coochie Tunnel Rats, was on his fourth tour of duty, and it seemed nothing could touch him. Sergeant Tony Campanello, or Campobello had come to Vietnam from the streets of New York to vent a rage that had turned him into a formidable fighting machine. For seven years, Paxton Andrews would write an acclaimed newspaper column from the front before finally returning to the States and then attending the Paris Peace Talks. But for her and the men who fought in Vietnam, life would never be the same again. That's a terrible, oh yet, although accurate, um, <sighs> although it actually takes halfway through the book before anybody gets to Vietnam. <laughs> okay, so what happens in this fucking book? Oh, Jesus. So Pax is from... Savannah. Savannah. And it, you learn immediately in this book that Paxi has, and I did not remember this. I remember, like, the, the, the kind of soft, like, well-intentioned racism of the Vietnam parts. I did not remember just the old-fashioned racism, racism of Queenie. Queenie Sorry. loved Paxton more than her own babies. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, Queenie's mother brought her in. Well, we need to describe Queen, or Queenie is, as, as is put in the book... Queenie is basically the most treasured thing in the South, which is a fucking black wet nurse. Mm -hmm. They call her a fat black a mammy. Huge purring black baby yes. nurse is the oh. quote. And the, I mean, the thing is, like, yeah, you know, the, the whole point of Queenie is to prove that Paxton's one of the good ones. I hate this. She, basically, what Danielle Steele did was she had one too many glasses of wine la like the night before she decided to do this, watched Gone with the Wind, saw Hattie McDaniel, and said, hey, I'm going to take this, but I'm not going to make you a real fucking person, yeah. and I am going to create an Aunt Jemima fucking mammy character. And if it would be one thing, if, if she like um, set it up that Paxton thinks that, of course, Queenie loves her more than she loves her own babies, but then we find out that Queenie's like... um. Paxton's all right. I feel sorry for her because a mama is a piece yeah. of work, but I'm going to go home when my shift is over. No. You know, no, you don't get that. You get... And the fact that the fact that Danielle Steele like, just called her a mammy. Yeah. Like, like in, in, in the, the stereotypes, she even she can't even come up with another name beyond, yeah. like, I'll just take the mammy stereotype and I'm going to just call it a mammy. Like, oh. Oh Danielle Steele is not a Southerner. I think she was trying to, because she's trying to portray Savannah as a, um, a stultified, um, you know, refuses to change backwater. Because Paxi is the good one and, like, learns to be so much better than Paxson that. Paxson actually calls herself, basically, a good one yeah. and later on. And, like, I'm on yeah. your side. And why don't you see that? It's like, okay, like, and we'll, we'll delve into it a little <laughs> bit more. But I do think that it is important to... Like, again, when I got to this part in the book, I just wanted to throw it in the fire. Like, the fact that this white woman is calling somebody Queenie, calling them a mammy, and then also talking about a black woman's body. Right there, I was just like, everything else that happens is nullified. Mammy's for me. hugs are like a pillow. Like, I, like the, the, the fact that you, like, you're, you're commenting on a black woman's body. Like, I... I hate it so much. All right, continue. Yeah, continue. I, so certainly do not read this book if that's the kind of thing that's going to bother you because I was not expecting it. Yeah, so it was, FYI, that's then it. But so anyway, Paxi, um, her dad's dead. He, he died in a plane crash with his fucking mistress. Yeah. Her brother's much older and a piece of shit. Her mother is like uh, one of those frigid southern pieces of shit ladies who's really into the junior league and wants her to go to Sweetbriar. By the way, there are some lovely ladies who go to Sweetbriar. And if she's not going to go to Sweetbriar, she suggests that she go to Agnes. Sky, yeah, the book opens on the day of John F. Kennedy's assassination, letting us fucking know that we're in the 60s. Um, you know, and you like, can hear their soundtrack, and their soundtrack is the most obvious soundtrack. Yeah, like, yeah this book does not do deep cuts, okay? This book is going to have Fortunate Son when we get to Vietnam. It's going to have Buffalo Springfield. Yeah. It's going to have... Surprisingly, she didn't go to Kent State somehow. No, she brought it up. No, yeah, she brought it up. She I brought know, it up, but, uh, but she wasn't there. She, she, wasn't she was there, there for everything there. else, but... Um, yeah, so anyway, because she does, she wants to go to Harvard because her dad went to Harvard. Right. Well, to Radcliffe to Harvard. Uh, she doesn't get into Harvard. So she decides to end up like, fuck it, I'm going to go to Berkeley. Yeah, it was like after talking to Queenie. <laughs> like, you got to go, you got to follow your heart, child. Yeah. Lord, Lord child. That and of course thing. it was dialect. Yes, yes, it was. Um, Like. Yeah. But like, you know, Queenie's, God, I hate saying it. 
Uh, Maybe Queenie just like wants to get this kid out of here, so she doesn't have to work so fucking hard. She still stays at the house, but um, yeah, oh yeah, she still stays at the house. But like, yeah, it's basically like go where you want to go, like do what you want to do, don't want you to do what your mother wants you to do. So she decides to go to Berkeley. Her father's left her a small trust, so she can do what she wants without like fear of like her mom's repercussions. So I mean, of course, that's one of those things that you can afford to be brave if you have a trust fund. Yeah, exactly. So she gets to Berkeley, and she's got roommates, and her roommates are interesting. And she's got Gabby, who's, like, the sweet redhead with a hot brother. Oh, boy, y'all, she's got Yvonne. Okay, so Yvonne is an, a, a young African-American woman from Alabama who immediately hates Paxi because Paxi's a white woman from, from fucking Georgia. And then we have Paxi pull the Karen and explain what civil rights means. And basically... Isn't that what Dr. King said? Oh, my God. Like, you're judging me. This is reverse prejudice. And, like, you know... And then like, and then she calls her, like, well, why did you leave? And all this shit. Like, just the, the white privilege in the oh first God. three chapters of this book. Again, I wanted to throw it in the fucking fire. Like, stop explaining the black experience to black people. Ugh. Like, as somebody, especially as somebody who works at an HBCU... Like, the best thing that you can learn, white ladies, nice white ladies who might be listening, is when to shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. When to shut the fuck up and listen to people. And this book enraged me because this book is about well-intentioned white woman bullshit. And when we got to Yvonne, that was another part Mm -hmm. where I just wanted to throw it in the fucking fire. Why can't you tell I'm one of the good ones? I'm one of the good ones, is what she said. I'm Mm -hmm. on your side. And blah, 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 blah. I stand what Dr. King stands for. And I'm like... Bitch, you've never been, like, you, unless you have to worry about someone killing you because they don't like you, because they don't like how you look, because where you're sitting, because of anything, shut the fuck up. And again, if I had read this book at 11, I'd have been all in it. Oh, I know. But, like, as an adult woman, and especially with everything that's going on right now, like, I just fucking hated it and it made me honestly like this made me like Danielle Steele less as a person. I did. It did. Like, because of, well imagine you put yourself in Yvonne's footsteps and you came all the way from fucking Alabama. You thought you got out of Alabama yeah. and then the first person you fucking meet and you hear like hey y'all I'm Paxton like oh fucking shit. And then shit. like Paxton's like trying you know this book is all about like Paxton's white girl magic and that she's like trying to be a friends with Yvonne so she's like Avon wants cigarettes and a Coke. She wanted Coke, but like she wanted a Coke, but she also wanted some fucking cools. Yeah. And I was like, are you like, just every. Were they out of watermelon? I yeah, mean, yeah. It was like everything about it, you know, like we get described, like we know that Avon's beautiful, but it's like Avon is beautiful with her afro and just and, like. And I, it might even say the word exotic. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it does. And yeah. then like we, like you get every fucking black woman stereotype is in this book in that. You know, you get the Mamie. You get basically the Jezebel that is Yvonne because she, like, goes off with her boyfriend. And, like, they also call her the angry black woman. Mm. And I think what also enrages me To be fair, everybody does go off with a different boyfriend. So she's not the only one who is having sex before marriage. What enrages me about this a little bit, and this is already, like, I'm I'm sorry to tangent. No, go ahead. (sighs) On Twitter, there was a feed about this insane book series. Insane. Written by this white woman, and the book is called, like, it's a book series, and, like, this one was called, like, Taming His Cajun Temptress, or something like Creole Temptress, and the, it's part of this book series that is called, it's, it's, it takes place in Louisiana, and it's called Katrina's Aftermath, and that's the name of a fucking restaurant. What? And so, like, I feel like I read this book at just the time where I'm seeing people's, like, you know, again, as a white lady, I have my bubble, and I'm very aware of my bubble, where I'm seeing people, of like, women of color that I admire and, like, like and have relationships on Twitter, like, be real world hurt by this fucking nonsense. Yeah. And so, like, to see Danielle Steele's rich, white, blonde ass trying to tackle color just pisses me right the fuck mm-hmm. off. And so, like, that, like, I was just, like... If she would have like, ignored it, it would have also pissed me off in a way less, like, I think, uh, like, I, I would have been less yeah. infuriated if it wasn't... If you just pretended, like, the civil rights The magic of happen. Paxton and mm-hmm. Paxton's, like... You know, here's the thing. Like, Paxton never said, you know what, Yvonne, you're right. I don't 
I don't know what you've been through. Why don't you tell me a little bit yeah. about it? Like, I would have liked this character so much mm-hmm. more. But, like, Paxton never comes from it. It's always like, I'm on your side. I'm one of the good ones. Let me explain to you what Martin Luther King is talking and about. And it acts like, 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 like it actually she, she scored a point with that. Like, oh, burn. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, oh, oh my God. So, Fucking Paxton. All right, I will, I will now, like, keep my... Well... Happily, at this point, once Yvonne goes off with her football player boyfriend, yeah, she's the, out. the book completely forgets race for the rest of the book as it applies to black and white. So right. thank fucking God. Yeah, I was like so glad that that was done. <laughs> yep, done, done. Because like Paxton forgets about it, and so then yeah, the book forgets thank, about it. Thank God. Okay. So the important thing that happens at Berkeley really is A, Paxton gets her eyes open to the peace movement, but also she meets Gabby's brother, Peter, who's a blonde man. So, you know, he's very. Mm, <laughs> he's very atoliated. He's like a plant that needs more. We sun. know how you feel about a blonde man. Uh, yeah, well, I was right in this damn book, wasn't <laughs> I? All these blonde is boring. Don't bet on a blonde man. So anyway, they it's it's love. They're young, but they take it slow. But they do all move into a house together where they fuck and and they want to get married, but they want to wait until Paxton's up at school. Right. Meanwhile, the war is heating up, and of course, Peter is in. He well, he, he's in his last year at Berkeley when they meet, and then he's in law school. So he is exempt from the draft because America loves nothing more than a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. Yeah. Um. But he will be turning twenty six like a couple months after he gets out of law school. Yep. But they're not going to possibly draft him then, right? Right. No. Right. They're never going to take anybody so old that is twenty four. Yeah. Twenty? No, he's like twenty-five and a half. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which now seems to me like a, a precious unborn fawn because we are so very elderly. So, dude, <laughs> another tangent. I was at kickboxing the other day, <laughs> and this girl that I was working out with it was her birthday, and she's like, "You gotta take it easy. I mean, I'm getting old." And she's like, "I'm almost 30. <laughs> no. and then I punched her in the face. Good no, no, for you. Really no, hard. I hope that you did. <laughs> like, I was just like this. This baby bitch. You better take it easy on my fist. <laughs> my 40-year-old like, fist. I was like, this baby bitch. She's talking about almost being 30. Well, that's I almost like, just like slammed her down. You know what that means, though? That means that she looked at your old ass face and did not think it was as maybe, old ass as it is. Maybe. Maybe like the face mask. Going. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's a snail. I do like, you know, <laughs> I do a lot of snail creams. So, of course you do snail creams. What? Anyway. Yeah, this right. looks good, girl. All right, let's. Let's go there. Let's I just got the two wrinkles, like, right between my eyebrows. They're like, what oh the fuck God. is that shit? Like, my, my plan is, like, to get the furrow. Like, no, I, I, mine are vertical because I got them from being a librarian for so long <laughs> and having that what the shit look yeah, on my it face. Is a good, yeah. All right. So, I'm sorry, but they're not going to get married because they, even though she knows he's about to get vulnerable to the draft, at this point, I don't think they gave a rat's ass if you were married or not, frankly. No, they didn't give a shit. They just needed people to go over there. And yeah, like, they needed, like, fresh bodies. So, um, yeah, he does get drafted. And she and and she feels guilty because she you know um, she thinks well we, we should have got married we should have got married they didn't care but like you know should he go to Canada should he not um, I, I mean they're 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 committed they're gonna spend their lives together like Gabby's like her sister. Yeah. But he goes, and he does not last a fucking week, y'all. No, Five no. days into dang. Bam. So he bam. Friendly dang fire. And just fucking dies. Yeah. Boo-hoo. No more Peter. I'm sorry. I, 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 I People dying in Vietnam is very tragic. It's just that Peter, well, there's not a lot of uh, Peter to miss. I'm sorry. So <laughs> He's a blonde man. I don't know how you feel about blonde. I know. See, see, see. So, of course, she's devastated. Um, uh, she, oh, uh, we should mention she wants to be a journalist, and Peter's dad runs one of the big uh, San Francisco papers that's a fake one. So, it's it's not like they're... So, um, Peter does, and then, like, a couple months later, RFK gets assassinated, and, like, she just loses the plot and decides to, like, drop out of Berkeley, like, less than, you know... She's got, yeah, she does not even have a semester left. But then, I mean, you know. And then she uses her white lady privilege to decide that she wants to go over to fucking Vietnam. Yeah, she goes into Peter's dad's office and he, like, owns this large paper that Mm -hmm. has foreign bureaus and says she wants to be a war correspondent. And he's like, you want to do the fuck what? And she's like, I want to be a war correspondent. And he's like, you know, that's a thing that you learn how to do. And she's like, fuck you, I want to be a war correspondent. I'm blonde and I'm beautiful. It doesn't fucking matter. 
And maybe life really is that easy for if blonde, beautiful want, women. It could be. Maybe it is. Maybe this is a, the, what I don't get about this book is that it it's just that lesson. fucking easy. That could be the fucking lesson. Yeah. Like, be blonde and beautiful and you can go to Vietnam any fucking time All you right. want. I mean, there's like white privilege and then there's like white privilege yeah. and we just never access like that. Yeah, the gone, club, like the class the years level. Yeah, yeah like, white privilege. Because uh, she goes over to Vietnam um, knowing nothing about war correspondence. Um, knows nothing about war correspondence. She's been an nothing, intern at different papers. She's intern. She <laughs> knows nothing about war correspondence. She knows nothing about anything. She knows nothing about life. She knows nothing about, like, she is 22 years old. She has no, like, inkling of, like, any kind of combat training. Nothing. She just, like, she just rolls up in there. And, and she's not joining like a uh, an established bureau. Like I'm assuming now. I don't. I don't know. I should have done my research. But like I'm assuming that if you're like the New York Times, it's not just one dude there. Like that they yeah, have. Like, like literally, when yeah. I say a foreign bureau, that there's a like um like 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 a chef robe. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I feel like a it's foreign like, bureau. Yeah, like, but no, she rolls up in there and she has no idea what to do. She just starts talking to people. She just like she comes in like she the first time like she falls asleep with her fucking key in the door. Oh my god, yes. Like she's just a dumbass. Like she's getting you know. I hate her so much. But she makes connections like um like and, and she, she doesn't really make connections. Her tits and her blondness like get her. What would take somebody months of, like, working on, like, in 30 minutes... Hiring a fixer and all this, yeah. Like, in 30 minutes, she has met, like, a seasoned correspondent who's like, hey, I'll take you into combat zone. Let's go. Um, And they go, and, like, she just handles being in war. Like, no fucking... And, I mean, there's, like, we're talking guts on the ground. I mean, like, terrible things happen. Like, Like, they did to, you know, these people who are war correspondents. Again, it was like Danielle Steele had wine and watched China Beach and was like, I'm going to make a fucking book of this shit. And, yeah, so she meets this guy, Ralph, who is a seasoned correspondent, and he kind of takes her under his wing and takes her to a couple of places, and she sees some action. You You know, know. one thing I did like about this, though, a lot. I mean, I did not hate it as much as Courtney did because it still had a little bit of that halo of my childhood to it. Although, shit, I was not expecting the mammy. But um, what I thought was interesting about this is that she's never in sexual peril. It doesn't go to that cheap thing where she's afraid she's going to be raped and she's like, you know, I mean. Yeah, but at the same time, like, the the other thing. Which also seems unrealistic. Well, the other thing that annoyed me the fuck about it is, like, the real female war correspondents who did this shit, like, had to deal with a lot of, like, army chauvinism. And, oh, yeah. like, a lot of, like, dudes who are like, no, we're using World War Two rules. You can't come here. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know, who would have said, like, no, you got tits. You're not coming in here. None of that shit happens to Paxi. Hilariously, Everyone, they call her DD, but it stands for Donut Dolly. Yeah. Not she, as in, like, your like, tits. She's all fucking insulted by it, but, like. Yeah. It would stand for your fucking tits. Yeah, and, like, it's just, it's a fucking insult to the woman who really did this because, like, her hotness paves the way and everyone, like 95% of the people that she meets treat her with the utmost respect and decency and like just let her roam fucking freely oh, yeah. about the place. I was like, you've met, you've met military dudes. I oh, know yeah. military dudes. Yeah. Like, yeah, this bitch is not just roaming around. I, I can't actually go and just drop in on my husband at work because he works yes. on a military base. And since uh, Fort Hood, they shut those things down so hard, I cannot get on post. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, him. it's just so... Oh, Anyway, okay, so she meets Ralph. She goes to a couple things. Like, people get blown up, blah, 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 blah. Like, it, it, I picture your Vietnam movie, like yes. the first big battle scene of your Vietnam movie. That's exactly oh what you're Oh my god, you know what? Like, I feel like fucking Tropic Thunder had more authenticity than this piece of shit. So like, yeah, she's got like the little, like Mississippi boy, like she's got his like guts in her hands, you know. So she goes with Ralph on one of these excursions to Coochie, which is like this big, like where they're like blowing out the tunnels, you know, that the, the Vietnamese are putting in. And that's where the one realistic thing that happens is, like, this, like, sergeant, general, whatever the fuck he was, lieutenant, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, wow, you just, you live in a military town, you're just, like, shut, the sergeant, sergeant general Campobello. <laughs> whatever, the, the big guy, the main, like, the, the Bill, Bill. Oh, Bill, Bill Captain. Captain, whatever. Yeah, I think it's so Captain. So, basically, a grenade gets launched her way, and this hot blonde, like, jumps on her and saves her from the grenade. 
I'm going to be horny for the blonde that jumps on me yeah, in the face. Yeah, that's true. He is a, a hornier worthy blonde. Yeah. But still, not that. No, so, no. she meets him. He's married. But, you know, what happens in Vietnam literally stays in Vietnam. <laughs> because you're going to get your ass blown up. So, because if you, if you didn't look sideways at Paxi, sorry, it's been nice knowing you. So, they start this, like, torrid little love affair. He's married, has three kids. Paxi's 23. Don't give a shit. <laughs> Um, Although that's probably not a historic. That whatever yeah. happened to Vietnam got fucking crazy I because mean, like fu- you lose yeah, your like, mind in the combat zone. Do what the fuck you want, but like the thing is, it's like what got me about it was like literally everyone who met her and was around her unchaperoned for forty five minutes was deeply in love with her. Yes, there was never a hey. Let's just fuck it out. Yeah. Like like Bill's maybe like, the French guy. The French guy might have been like, yeah. hey, let's fuck it out. Bill's but. like. I love you so much. I've never loved anyone like this. And there's a part in the book, too. Like, Bill, Bill, is married to Debbie. And, like, he's, like, looking at Paxton, and he's, like, Paxton wasn't like his wife. His wife nagged at him about... Yeah, Paxton is 20-fucking-two. Bill, this motherfucker re-upped three times. Yeah. And his wife is, like, I'm sick of this shit. Come the fuck home. (laughs) And Bill's like, my wife nags at me about the kids and the house and the neighbors. But Paxton, who I've met 45 minutes ago, <laughs> doesn't do that. So I'm in love with her. And then there's a bombing in a cafe that they're in because oh, they yeah. weren't going to do it. Because, I mean, he's married and you shouldn't fuck a married man. But once you're in a bombing, it's okay. It's like you get a special dispensation from God, I think. I mean, what the fuck ever. I fucking hate this book so much. Like, this, this, this might be... Captive passions, and you know how I feel about I, I captive. I love captive passions. I know you do, but you know how I felt about captive passions. Like oh, yeah. this might be the one. So they fuck it out, and they're immediately wildly in love. And like, Bill's got an underling, a lieutenant, Tony, Tony Campobello. Fucking hates her, and yes, Tony, he's the only one who sees Tony through. Tony is a little. Maybe uh, she's an elf and his glamour, and then Tony know. can see through the glamour. Tony's like this little Italian guy from New York, and he's like. Use a fucking bitch, and you're useless, and all you're doing is fucking a guy here. You're not doing anything, and you're distracting him, and she's like, Yeah, your you pussy don't. is distracting him, and a, 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 a opposing tunnel right is going to blow his head You're going to get us killed. Yeah. And she's like, you don't know me, blah. Isn't that what Dr. King March for? That's what Dr. King March for, <laughs> is blonde pussy. Yeah. Um, so, inevitably... What happens is Bill gets his fucking head blown off. Everybody who knows Paxson. Yeah, so then Tony gives her the business, and, you know, Ralph is all angered on her behalf. And I was like, everything that fucking Tony is like, Tony is the me in this situation. Yeah. Because I was like, like, bitch, you dumb bitch. Like, go home. All you're doing is playing at war. I have to be in war. Right. Although it's funny he says he has to be in war because all of these people seem to have limitless time off. Oh my god, they're always on fucking vacation. Like, they're always just in. They're always back to Saigon. They're always in Saigon. Go on on dates all the time. So, she goes home for a few months after Bill's death and she's just listless. She can't. Oh, Queenie dies. Oh yeah, Queenie dies. So, you know, Queenie, who is like a mother to Paxton. More than her own mother, who is an ice queen. You know, Paxton doesn't go to the funeral because it was the next day and she it was in the black district. Yeah, so uh, it, clearly she wouldn't be welcome. She'd be not safe. And that means that, like, well, no, the, uh, her brother said, oh, you shouldn't go because um, I said, you would make everybody uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, like, you're not going to, oh. Well, maybe these women at this church know that if their sons even look sideways at Paxton, they're going to get blown the fuck up in Denang. Yeah. So. Which is a reasonable reason not to look directly at the Paxton. I mean, fucking, fucking Paxton. So. Paxton! Uh, who the fuck was named Paxton Nobody. in 19 whatever the fuck she was born? Nobody. She's got, she's called Paxton, she's called Pax, she's called Paxy, she's got all these fucking nicknames. I hate her. Paxel. So, oh, I need a Paxel after like Paxel. reading this book. So, alright, so she's like listless, like Queenie's died, you know. And she can't readjust to civilian life. No. As if she hasn't been a civilian. Um, but yeah, I mean, I get it. Like, war is a, this enormous I adrenaline trip. I spoke trip. earlier. I feel like Fucking okay. I, again, I, like honestly, this book I was just like checked out of. I feel like in between Peter's death in Vietnam, I think MLK died, and then yeah. I think in between Bill's death in Vietnam, RFK died. I think you're right. Okay, so 
Because that was the 68? Yeah, 68 Demo- was the Democratic convention? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so... One of the really bad years of the war. Okay, yeah. so, yeah, like, I think while she's home, RFK has died, and she's just, you know... She I don't remember the exact time. Well, she's, like, covering political things, um, and she doesn't care anymore because yeah. nothing is, like, being in a war zone, which is, you know... I mean, I get it. Fair? I get, like, be, be, being an adrenaline junkie, but, like... That could have been handled better. So she she convinces the owner of the paper, Peter's dad, to let her go back over to Vietnam indefinitely. And so she goes back over, and again, immediately, because she was there for six months. Yeah. But now, you know, she's a fucking pro. Yeah. It's like she's seasoned. And so she gets back, and one of the first people that she meets is little lieutenant, or sergeant, what the fuck ever, I don't care. I believe he's a lieutenant because yeah. Bill was a captain. Tony Capovello, and he apologizes for how he treated her. Oh, the other thing was that she wanted to make sure that after Bill died, that you know all the belong all of Bill's belongings would be sent back home, including like love letters, the double end of dildo. Yeah, <laughs> so she so like, she intercepted it. Yeah, she asked Tony, and Tony was all like, "I really admire you for." You know, being well, a... To be fair, like, she actually did go from Saigon to Coochie and could have fucking died doing yeah. this. But, of course, Paxton will never die. Paxton is... No. A, so... The angel of death doesn't die. Oh Santa Muerta doesn't die. So, she and Tony, like, strike up a little friendship. They have a nice, like, evening. They talk about Bill a lot. Yeah. And, you know, Ralph's still there because Ralph's got France... <laughs> His lady, who is... Oh, let's talk about France yes, for a moment. Let's okay, talk about so France. So, I feel that Eurasian is not a term that people use anymore. No. Um, France is half French, half Vietnamese. Because, of course, the French have yes. been in Vietnam for all this time. Um, now, France isn't like the other Vietnamese girls because she's so polished and so beautiful. And she has such nice table manners. And so, Paxton makes the specific judgment that... Uh, well, see, France had been, um, had born a child to and been, I think, married to? Or no, I'm not sure she, if they were married to a GI. And um, he died. Yeah. So, but she refused to get, no, she refused to get married to this guy and then refuses to get married to Ralph because she knows if she goes back to America that um, people will treat her like shit and they will call her a gook and they will call her a dink, which is, and, and, and Paxton is like, they would, because they think that she's the same as these prostitutes. I have another issue with this, too. Like, I have so many issues because, like, I don't know. To me, this does a massive disservice to, like, anyone who is Asian American. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just, I hate this book. They'll just assume you're regular Asian. Yeah, like... Like, holy shit. And essentially she's saying, well, I mean, I would understand it if they were talking like that. If they were talking about a real, like, Vietnamese An actual Vietnamese sex worker. You know, these desperate, starving women on the streets of Saigon. I hate this These women who I would think that she would have a little fucking uh, compassion towards, but evidently zero. No, she doesn't. She's a fucking... See you next Tuesday is what she Yeah, because like, okay. she clearly thinks that there is such a thing as, as all those slurs. Um, but, yeah. like, France isn't that. Yeah. Fran- I mean, they, uh, they would mistake France her France is like, this. oh, she's too high class. They would know because, you know, yeah. again, she knows fucking table manners and shit. So, okay. And by table manners, I mean she knows which American for. Yeah, I don't exactly. mean, like, of course these women, I'm sure, have their own table manners. Yeah, they have their own fucking man- Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that, I mean, that's well, we shouldn't have like, to tell you that, but just in case you thought that I didn't. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. So, yes. okay. So, <sighs> Ralph and France are, like, happy. She's pregnant with his baby. She's got a little boy. Like, they've got this happy family. So, Ralph is obviously very happy to see Paxton because everyone loves fucking Paxton. So, he's like, hey, let's go out on a mission because that's how you fucking do it. You just casually just day trip it. That's the thing about it is, like, they treated, like, they treated these missions that they went on like they were fucking day trips. Mm -hmm. And, like... It does and they such have a, no, no, these are all, like, the army's taking them around here. They have no local fixers. Just, they have no translators. Just, they have no... It does a disservice to everybody that actually was part of this and had to deal with this and see the horrors that were, that were Vietnam and be a part of Vietnam for these assholes to just zip in and out, like... Like it was a tw- like it was like us going to fucking Myrtle Beach. You go to Myrtle Beach, you watch somebody's head get blown off, and then you come back the same day. And then the horrors. Are, well, okay. What's interesting is that she does now. The other war correspondents are talking about how it's weird that you're getting used to the like to, to taking these great pictures of dead kids. 
But all the horrors that she sees, she never sees any civilian horrors. She never sees any no. Vietnamese bodies blown up. No, all she American sees, boys. in other words, yeah. These so she American can be upset. Boys. These American, American boys. boys. Why are we here? What is the point? Like, I fucking hate this book. That should be the title of whatever. It's, I it's very this book. juvenile. It's, it's like a, a young person's this idea is, of what a book is. I feel like this is her be. first book. All right, so is, it's twenty or twenty fucking fifth book. Yeah. All right, so so. Ralph and her go back to Coochie, and, like, there's Tony. Hey, Tony, what's up? This bitch goes wandering off. She just goes wandering the fuck well, no, off. She's she following, is following the photojournalist. And yeah, I mean, like, the photographer's with her, so it's not like she just, like, went off to pee somewhere. This is, to me, this is that she did not do anything that she shouldn't have done no. as, a, as a journalist. I don't but, know. So she gets, she gets basically trapped behind enemy lines for a hot minute. She's with... She's with a radio guy. She's with a couple other soldiers. And they're like, okay, we can do one or two things. We can run back, and it's going to be a really long time. Or we can run to these, like, this is where I have a problem. Like, she's like, or we can run to this, like, tree line. And she's like, let's run to the tree line. And then she just takes the fuck off. And why is like, anybody asking her? Like, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, and she has no combat training. No. Like, she has no combat training, and she's just, like, dodging bullets like she's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, like... Of course, they get to the tree line, and the radio man has, like, gotten his back half blown off, but the radio's okay. So, she gets on the radio and immediately knows how to operate yeah. it, and it's cool under pressure, and, like... And they're calling for a dust-off, and they're yeah, telling her to put... Yeah, she knows all the fucking terminology. I just... And so, like, she gets rescued, and then Tony gives her the business again, and is like, you yes! don't... Yes! And... She, and then so her and Tony are having a, like, a shouting match, and Ralph again is all indignant on her behalf, and uh, they get back to Saigon, and then a day later, there's fucking Tony, because he can just leave the front lines whenever the fuck he wants. What's really funny is that, well, not funny at all, but um, in that Sorrow of War book I'm reading, um, the main character, he spent a lot of time as, like, in the NVA outside of Coochie, like, attacking Coochie, and I was like, let him be the guy. Yes. Let him be the guy who fragged Bill. Oh, I guess oh it's God. not fragging if it's, like, I, not your officer, yeah. but let this man have eaten Bill's heart, because you know what? Ugh. Fuck Bill. Hate Fuck it Bill. So, so, her and Tony... <sighs> Finally, like, come, like, bang it out. They finally bang it out. Tony's hot. Like, and again. Yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. Tony's I'm partial right. because. You don't see a lot of short dudes in romances. I married a not tall New York Italian boy whose coloring is like an Italian, you know, like, you know, he. I married an Irish boy, but his coloring is like an Italian guy. <laughs> like, he's got that black Irish, like, he is tan, he is dark. You would think if it wasn't for his big Wally head. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> that he is Italian, but he is Irish. So, ah, uh, that's my jam. That's it's a I, sewer rat turned tunnel rat, is what yeah, you're saying? that's what yeah. I married, is I love a, I love a mouthy New Yorker. And so, I was happy that all these boring blondes died, and, like, the, the little twitchy, like, high-strung New York guy gets, like... He's very interested in produce. He is very interested in produce. <laughs> and my... Uh, I bet he loves a bean. My husband used to work at a produce stand. Oh, like I see where this is going. Yeah, I, I so see it. I, I see, see it. a lot of Christopher and Tony. Um, so, but she and Tony take up, and Tony evidently has all the time in the world to go on these dates and stuff. He's always so many fucking dates. Like it's like it's like thirteen months goes by like this. Like, and then boom, he's well, he's not dead, but they all tell her he's dead for oh, sure. He's MIA. He's MIA. He's a P. Yeah, he's MIA. he's MIA. That's all they know. And which means he's probably dead. In the meantime, like she has found out that he had been married, that he and his wife had had a little girl, that they lost to leukemia. He's got a little boy. Joey. I mean, like they had talked about this. This wasn't. It was not a surprise. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and she fucked on him with his brother. The wife. Not, the wife, not, not Paxton. Paxton. Although I wouldn't be surprised if Paxton no. did. Except all these people would be dead. Um, yeah, the wife, uh, like, got divorced with him, like, to marry his brother, and so, therefore, their son, um, Tony hasn't seen the son since then, because... Yeah, they write letters occasionally. Yeah, it'd be confusing, and, and all that, so and, 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 of course, Paxton thinks it's, like, sad, because, remember, Paxton's <sighs> dad died, um, oh, yeah, I know, I'm trying to, like, care about Paxton's internality. I don't even care. Okay, so, anyway. Whatever. So, so, Tony goes... P like he goes MIA and you know she hangs out for a little bit. Ralph dies. Oh, this is upsetting. 
So Ralph, Ralph dies, and they go to tell this France. This, to me, is, like, the most realistic part of it, though. Yeah, like, but it doesn't it was, bother me as much as it does you. It really bothered me a lot, because, okay, Again, well... Again, I have a different, like, But, well, okay, space. so bothered... When I say bothered, yeah, I, I mean that saying. it, um... I, I found it realistic and also incredibly tragic because I know that this did happen a lot. But remember, this is our only named Vietnamese yeah. person in this entire book, and she barely has a speaking part. So um, she finds out that Ralph died before Paxton and uh, whoever gets Oh, there. that's right. Like, oh, we had to backtrack. That's oh, they had the baby and all. So <sighs> Ralph is away. France. Ha- is having Ralph's baby and like Paxton is panicking and Tony basically delivers the yeah, baby. Yeah, so they're close to her in this way. And they name the baby Pax. Like that's the name of the baby. It's a piece and also yeah. yeah. Um. So and then like Ralph goes missing and they're like back and forth running between like the foreign yeah. bureau and everything. They don't go and tell Pax uh, France in person until a little too fucking late because they get there and, and they had to yeah. knock down the door and she has uh, taken poison with the two children. Yeah, she's uh, dressed everybody up uh-huh. and she's like taking poison and wrote a note and about it's how just, she's like to be with him. Because and, she can't go anywhere else. She yeah. knows what it will be like for her and this is absolutely true yeah. that um, of course there were all these children of American service members um, yeah. left to starve in the streets of Vietnam but I actually found that extremely affecting. So that really bothered me. A that it was it bothered me a lot as a person. But it, um, that that was the only Vietnamese character, and yeah. that they she was essentially like put in the refrigerator by the book. So it yeah. was not unrealistic, but it was still that like uh, there there she went and she was there to kind of essentially make Paxton feel something. You yeah. know, I hate it. So okay, <laughs> flash forward again. Tony's missing. He's in my A. Paxton has gone back to the States. Because um, she gave up on looking for him. Because she's she given looked, up. There's no more for her to look. No. So she wardrobe. gets a job. She's hanging out in California for a little bit. But she in a, like gets a job with the fucking New York Times. She's the world's most amazing journalist. She is. She goes to Paris for the fucking peace talks. Like she interviews uh, what's his name um, from Me Lai. I mean, like she she has now um, Kathy Court- Coffee. She she's now interviewed all the important people. Courtney in the has war. skimmed the last twenty pages of this. You book. didn't she's miss like, anything. Uh, she went to um, to talk to Tony's mom little boy. And, well, his mom yeah. doesn't speak a he, she doesn't speak a the English. Well, she does a little bit, but yeah, like, but not really. But okay. she she becomes friends with the mom and the ex wife and then the little boy. The and little she's hanging boy. She's them. close to the little boy. Um, and yeah, and she, she continues to update him and and she's given this poor child false hope about his dad who in real world is dead, 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 dead. dead. Just blown into so many pieces they couldn't, but you know. It doesn't. Yeah. And of course that's the thing about Vietnam is you never really knew. Yeah. You know. I think that's the thing. It's like, again, we'll get into this, I guess, later, but like, I, I feel like we all knew that like. We're gonna fucking find. Well, Tony. it's a romance novel. They always have. I mean, I it's hate not a romance fuck. novel if it doesn't have a happily ever after. So yeah, you can't blame I it for being like, a I was novel. just like ready for it to be done because again. So she's always looking for Tony, and she of course then they start. This is like you know, as the war, the Paris Accords are going on. They start releasing these prisoners, and she interviews them all. And it's like she's interviewing for the New York Times, but she's really like, okay. Fuck the New York Times. Have you seen a little rat man? <laughs> Have you seen my squirrely boyfriend? And uh, so she she starts to hear that like some people think that it might have been this guy who got captured, and then yeah. like later some people think it might have been this guy who escaped, but they're sure he got shot. I will say this does remind me a little bit like you know there's like that portion of Unbroken where they talk about like just like the urban legends of like who was in this cell you yes. know like that it, uh, that's legit and i like, mean that's, that's why people cool. people still hold on to hope I know, it's really you know i mean yeah, i guess probably not anymore but when i, I was mean, a kid people still honestly believed that there were somewhere in the well, jungle you know business. but i feel like it's the same thing as like if you have somebody in your like in your life that goes missing and like you still hope you know like, yeah like give you some sort of give I, you i've body. been watching that um that other, like, when I'm not sucked into, you know, gay tennis realness, um, the, that Confessions of a Killer, um, oh, what is his name? Hold on, I gotta find his fucking name. Um, I think this is what, like, you know, where people just think, well, because if you don't ever have the closure. Henry Lee Lucas. So, oh, like, yeah. You know, where you don't have the closure, yeah. you're gonna just. I always wonder and you'll cling on to it like, like okay so this guy who like completely improbably says he killed like 8,000 people yeah 
well, gosh, well, maybe we should, yeah. Like, yeah, let's like, pay yeah, the, like it's and, like the Henry Lee Lucas thing yeah. where it's like, the, he, like, he was all like, I killed 600 people and blah, 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 blah. Like, and it's just, it makes me, that made my shit, like, I was so mad at, like, the fucking white man confidence of, like, the Texas Rangers who were just like, mm-hmm. we'll okay, just, we'll just play with people's fucking emotions yeah. and, like, be like, hey, this guy killed your family. Anyway, all right, yeah. I'm sorry. So, yeah, POW, she's back in, she goes back to Saigon. She goes for the fall of Saigon. She goes to tourist the fall of Saigon. Yes. Because Paxton fears no death. Because death has become Paxton. Quite frankly, yeah. death flees from Paxton. Yeah. When, she, when death sees Paxton <laughs> He's like, coming. this bitch again. This bitch again. <laughs> Jesus, here we go. So, okay, literally, they're running for the fucking helicopter. Okay, and when we've all seen this video footage of, of stuff that was like this. Very Somebody very tries way. to hand her a baby. She's like, fuck your fucking baby. And fuck she's like, baby. I'm looking for Tony. I'm looking for my little sewer rat. And then suddenly a little Vietnamese guy starts running next to her. And she's like, I smell sewer rat. And it's him. Oh he is made all the way to it's Saigon. Like, there's no explanation of like. At this moment. Like, the only time she could have found him. None of it made any kind of fucking sense no. because like. What was he doing for all this time? Walking. He got real lost. He's like, like Moses like, in the desert. Because like they were like, yeah, he escaped two years ago. Yeah. Like, what the fuck was he doing? Like, you can't live off the land as a white man in Vietnam for that long. People will start to notice you. Right. Like, uh, Maybe, maybe, no, you tell us. Because, like, I'm sure that there's people who know a lot more about this than we do. Maybe there's an example. But, no, it's, it's just that we knew with a romance novel, you know this going to be happily ever, ever after. This, but... So they... <laughs> oh my god I hate it so much I, I guess she's just like fuck your fucking baby <laughs> she did she yelled at that bitch's baby and then yeah. they get on the helicopter and then they get on the fucking ship and, and that's it just go. and that's the end, scene that's the end that's of it. it that's the end of it oh, so sun sets into the South China Sea that's it oh my god so we are gonna take a break to listen to one of our awesome promos from one of our awesome podcasts we're gonna have another friends. fucking drink yeah and then we'll come back to unpack this fucking book so, bear I with hope us. you brought your crowbar and Jesus. your shovel. Jesus. Jaws of oh, life. Jaws of fucking boy. life. God. Hey there. I'm Alex. And I'm Ryan. And we are the host of Suck My Fanfic, a weekly literary review of fan fiction. Let's be real, guys. We all, whether it was once on a rainy night by ourselves or in a big group of friends, have all read fan fiction. Or maybe over the shoulder of the person next to you on a bus. Perhaps. It doesn't matter where, but we've all done it. We are here to cut through the smut and give every fan fiction their fair shake. Because there's a lot of good creatives out there, and you might not know it. It might be the person sitting next to you right now. Might be your best friend. Your bank teller. Could be you. Who knows? Whoa. Join us each week as we... Tackle a new fandom. Talk about some stories. And make a couple of jokes along the way. You can find us on Fireside FM, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Thanks. And we're back. Ugh, we're back. We're ready to tackle into these fucking questions. I mean, I feel we dealt with a lot of them, but then, you know what? What you don't know about this book is that there's a- always more material to talk about oh, than, we, than we've than we already Ooh. embarked on. Oh. I know I know. you feel that we talked about this book for a year already. No, there's a lot more book than that. There's so much more book All than right. that. All right. Question one. Big dick energy or big dick energy? Depends on which dick we talk about. Okay, so again, I'm going to go into this because I married it. I love Tony because I love... So, what's hilarious to me is, again, I married an Irish Catholic boy from upstate New York. Um, And he, again, he's very black Irish with the funniest joke. So... I could tell y'all this because my dad doesn't listen to it. Um, <laughs> so we were talking one time because my dad's family is Irish, you know, like Irish descent. Well, too, but we're like, my dad, like, he's very, my dad had like black hair, looked Italian, you know. And we were talking about it. And I was like, so like, we're black Irish. And my dad was like, well, no, we're white. <laughs> like he thought you might have been confused yeah. about this yeah it was really cute I was like no that's not what it means <laughs> so my husband's family is like very well I, his brothers like have one of his brothers Dan the number one round so it's like yes. reddishy hair but Christopher like Christopher honestly looks like like kind of like the milkman's kid you know he's very <laughs> similar to his dad but he's very like when I first met him he had just come off like a summer of just like um being 
just a man of leisure, so he was, like, very, very fucking tan. I met him. He was wearing an NYP, like, an NYFD t-shirt and the, this gold crucifix. And I was like, who is oh, this? Oh, boy, dirty New York. And I was like, who is this Italian motherfucker? And then, like, he's, you know, really, you know, Irish, Irish New York. So, I love Tony because I have a soft spot for that. I, I, I believe. I love that. I love a, I love a Maldi New Yorker as, you know, the Evidence funny thing is, that. I think I conflated the two blonde dudes, because I was re- trying to remember this book before I read it again, and I had yeah. not read it since I was, I think I was even like 10 when yeah. I read this, okay? So, uh, I think I conflated Peter and Bill, because they were both a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. I mean, Bill, I guess, is brave, because he goes in and tunnels and shit. I mean, fuck, Paxton did that, but then Paxton feels no evil. That's true. <laughs> but, yeah, so Tony has, like, all this personality, mm. but he is absolutely that Daniel Steele guy who doubts your competence because he's right, and you had to prove him wrong. I don't like that though, but like for me that worked because like Paxton like never had to prove herself to any fucking no. body. And like I was like I like that he's like yeah a dumb bitch. And I don't know, like again, I, that's my that's We should have gotten uh well, we'll talk about this later, but um well, no, let's do it now. Would you talk shit with or about the heroine? My husband is a journalist and I think that maybe we should have had him read it. Oh, that would be and, really and critique like, the journalism yeah. in this. Because, okay, yes, it's not like she just, like, throws herself into journalism. She was doing high school papers. She interned at this paper. She interned. I mean, she she put the work in. No, in college. Being a fucking intern. Then you go to Vietnam. (laughs) Again, there are amazing women that were doing this actual real fucking job. They did their time. But they like, put what I'm their... saying is like, and I feel like this is a disservice to them because it's like, here's this beautiful blonde 22 year old that drops out of Berkeley at the 11th hour and just decides on a whim that she wants to go to Vietnam and because she's got a hookup, she can do it. There are amazing real people that did this shit. People yeah. that are braver Women. than I can imagine. I, I can't even imagine what it would take to do this shit. Did you know Morley Safer? Okay, I learned this from the Ken Burns Vietnam thing. Morley Safer. Okay, mm-hmm. for you young people, Morley Safer is a fucking glacier that used to be on <laughs> 60 Minutes. Okay, Morley Safer was older than God. And but Morley I mean, Safer went to Vietnam. He's yeah, Canadian. I mean, like, and he went on CBS Nightly News and he was like, okay, so I embedded myself in this patrol. And this is like when we had just got to Vietnam. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's a reason that Morley Safer is Morley Safer. Like, well, I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought but, he was just like an old dude. But no, he I was like, just, no, let me finish my story. Chris. Okay. He was, he went on the CBS Nightly News and said, I embedded myself in this patrol. And what we did today, and I'm paraphrasing, but one part is definitely one, like on, uh, on correct. Um, he's like, so we burned down four villages. We wounded like f- like six elderly people. We killed one baby, and what we got for it was these four elderly prisoners. Yeah. And the, the killed one baby is absolutely verbatim on CBS Nightly News. And Johnson called them that night and said, and this is also verbatim, are you trying to fuck me? <laughs> Yeah, and that's I mean, Morley Safer. That's the guy who went to fucking Vietnam. And here's Paxi. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like it's, like, it's really this... She packed dresses. This... It's so upsetting to me. Like, I have a really big... Like, I have a really big problem with this book. Because, again, there's amazing women, you know... And there's a Canadian lady. I can't think of her name. Kate Webb. Yeah. Like, there's people who did real fucking work, and... I mean, it does talk about her growth as a journalist, but it never talks about her actually learning how to be a journalist. Like, there's no fucking journalism in it. It's just like... No. And then this happened, and this happened, and this happened. I I hate Paxton. She might be my least favorite person. I hate her a lot. I hate this character And I so remember much. loving her when I was a kid, because, well, she seemed very adult to me. But I can tell you that um, my husband has a very low opinion of anybody who, wants, who goes to J school. <laughs> Yeah, I as, as, as somebody who, um, who I guess in the um, in the army, I guess or, or whatever you call him, a Mustang, um, you know, he's worked his way uh, up without yeah. any kind of uh, with a college degree, but no journalism training, right? The way that people used to do it all the time, yeah. um, just getting a job at a newspaper and learning on the job. So I'm sure he would have fucking opinions about Paxton and her little red sandals. Oh, and even Ralph brings her combat boots. She doesn't even get her own combat boots. I bought my, like, she was like, I have some Eddie Bauer boots. Like, like the, the strongest ones I could find. Which, it was her doing her best. But it meant that she like, had no, no business no, being it's there. Not, it's not her 
fucking doing her best because, yeah. like... Her best would have been to get some fucking combat boots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, fuck, fuck her. Fuck her. It's not that hard. We did it back in the day, and we yeah. were dumb and stupid. So, again, Team Tony hated Paxson. Yeah, and, uh, really, the theme of this book, now reading it in the year 2020, is, um, like, the, the white exceptionalism. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I hate about her. Because I loved her when I was 10, yeah. and it was 1990. It I mean, is again, now it's 2020. Like, it's crazy to me that this is fucking 1990, and she's still writing the shit like she wrote in this book. Ugh, so, okay. So, we have to, like, via our poll, yep. via our back to... Live our to truth. Via, via our Patreon poll, um, we are back. We're... We're throwing Virginia Woolf out the fucking window Sorry. and Phyllis Schlafly too. We're back to Bechdel to bitch. So Bechdel to bitch ratio. It's interesting because what I think is very interesting about these Daniel Steele books is you, you're right that um, she writes platonic friendships very well. And so yes. uh, the weird thing is, okay, so she's very good friends with Gabby, who is Peter's um, but sister. Gabby, she silly. grows away from her immediately. I mean, the second she goes to Vietnam, Gabby seems silly, but that's. That doesn't seem um, unrealistic, no. frankly. Like, uh, somebody who just wants to get married and have babies, and you've been in Vietnam, yeah, you can't really relate to them anymore. What I thought was more interesting, and this is not um, really the intention of Beck the Bitch, but there are male friendships that she has. Daniel Steele writes, Daniel Steele writes platonic male-female relationships better than she writes platonic female relationships. And Often, I, I don't yes. know if it's like, I feel like Danielle Steele might want, be one of those bitches that's like, I have no I don't like female. women. Yeah. All like, my friends are boys. I feel like that's exactly what the fuck it is, so. Stop. She's wearing those kind of slippers that have the sequins that go red versus green. I have to. And she keeps petting them one way or the other, and you can probably hear it. I don't, I need it for this She's book. not massaging a porcupine. No, I'm playing with my, my slippers. Yeah, yeah, I'm, if you can hear that, that's what that is. I'm very stressed about this book. <laughs> but, so, yeah, she writes a platonic French is actually really well, and one thing that I do like about this book is that not everybody who meets Paxton wants to fuck her. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, she people see her as an adult, even when she completely does not deserve it. No, she does not. And and they they see her as a serious person, even when she also does not deserve no, it. No, she does not. So she deserves um, nothing. She deserves to be <laughs> fucking. Have, have well, her don't ass. worry. Everybody around her dies. <sighs> okay, so uh, when it comes to consent, is this book more Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? There's not enough sex in this fucking book, and there's not. There needs to be more kind of, fucking in this fucking book, no, right? But, like, yeah. There's, there's no sexual danger in this book, which no. is refreshing because yeah, you would nice. expect it. But on the other hand, it seems a little unrealistic. Exactly. Like, like you would think that, like, uh, oh, that, like, uh, planes full of soldiers would say things to her. Yeah, like, hey, nice tits. Yeah. Like, dude. So, I had to tell you, it was wild. So, when we went to, me and my friend Truth. Hey, Truth. Um, we went on the Patreon subscriber Patreon Truth. Patreon Truth. Um, we went on the fact finding, like, we went on the, the hunt for hot ass to take pictures of at the Highland Games. If you're on Twitter, you saw some you of saw the pictures. You saw the picture. picture. <laughs> so, while we were there, I think it's just so wild because, like, it's been so long since this shit has happened to me. There was a guy, his dog was in a tartan, like a little thing, and it, but it was a service dog. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, can I, can I take a picture of your dog? Will that be it? And he was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. So I, like, knelt down. And he's like, the dog poses. And I was like, whatever. And, like, the dog started wagging his tail. And, like, I took a picture of the dog. And he's like, yeah, he's wagging his tail because you bent over. And I was like, what? And I was like, this has been so long. <laughs> But this, I don't know how to parse this. But this does not compute. Like A puff of dust came up. And yeah. And I was like, did I just get sexually harassed a little bit like and i was like i'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> I, was like, I was like wait a minute <laughs> it's like in one of those post-apocalyptic books where 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 the system comes alive yeah <laughs> like, i was like, like, <laughs> like the was lights like, and, and the dust <laughs> and it goes beep 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 it was like it's been so long that i've been like you know i mean again it's been a, but you know what it's been a long time since like that I've been, like, out with not my husband there, You've too. been unchaperoned? I've You've been, been out without your without your owner? Yeah, my owner was out there. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, part of me's like, damn it, I wish I could, I still wish I had, like, my cat-like reflexes from, like, my 20s to be like, we gonna square up? We gonna talk about this? You know, but I was just like, what? And then we walk away. Yeah. And, yeah, and I never had that many, like, of, 
I mean, not that I've never been sexually harassed, which <laughs> I don't think there's a woman alive. Yeah. Uh, maybe if you're, um, uh, maybe you've never heard anybody say anything gross to you because you actually are hard of hearing <laughs> and you... Uh, you know, you just weren't around where, uh, like, turning around where you could read their lips because otherwise every woman yeah. has had something said about or to them. But, yeah, I never really got a lot of that. Um, I, I think it'd be more like, well, that's a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you, would you look at that? I just, like, took the dog's picture on Did like, it just fall down? <laughs> scurried off. I just scurried off. I, I did a scurry. I was like, what? Yeah, well, and that that is what I generally did whenever that kind of thing happened. Well, I did have, um, and I mean, like, I used to work retail, and so you just kind of, like, push, you just, like, delete from your memory banks anything that anybody says to you when you work retail. But there was a situation once where I was, um, and this is what I I often say if people ask me for my Me Too thing, because men don't believe that this happens as casually. Um, that, like, um, so I used to work at Suncoast, which was, like, the video store yeah. back when you used to buy DVDs, um, and instead of only, like, not really own things that you pay a subscription to, and the way that we would put out stuff on Tuesdays is, like, these giant boxes, like, these, like, like, at the bottom of them, you would have to literally almost get into them, so you'd be bent, like, double at the yeah. waist, um, to get the one, like, the ones out of the bottom, and, and the way that they used to, uh, staff stores like that, you would often be by yourself when somebody was also on a lunch break, so I'm stuck in the store, and I'm bent over, like, half trying to scrounge these things out of the bottom, and a dude comes out of nowhere, and of course, like, my shirt has ridden up, so, um, you can see my tramp stamp. <laughs> Oh, no. See, I do have a tramp stamp. It's true. And he touches my back on my fucking naked tramp stamp and says, hey, shoddy. <laughs> and then if anybody who ever worked in videos, you'll, you'll, you'll have a flashback right now. What he also says is, y'all got Scarface on DVD? That's amazing. <laughs> because for a long time, Scarface was not, I was out of print on DVD. <laughs> and y'all got Scarface on DVD and y'all got Indiana Jones was like, I have nightmares still about that. But yeah, so this dude felt very free to walk up from behind me and put his hand on the <laughs> naked part of my back and say, hey, shoddy. And then what he actually just wanted to know is, do we have Scarface on DVD? Like, he wasn't even interested in my butt. Dude, I... Oh God, which, quite I, frankly, was not, you know... Um, I'm, I'm not sure if he would have noticed my butt. It was it's kind of more of a... Um, like, my leg start. I have so many, like... <laughs> Y'all are imagining, like, a child's drawing of a horse when I talk about myself, aren't you? <laughs> like, it's got 18 legs. <laughs> I, have, I have so... Oh, God, I have so many, like... I've never been catcalled, like, from a car or anything. I've never I've, had that. I've had, like... I'm sorry, I got way, way oh the, God, fuck the fuck off. Um, yeah, but in terms of consent, the Danielle still books are very interesting because women, I mean. Oh, yes. I can't think of a counterexample. They have sex when they want to. Yeah, but like, I, I remember what brought this up. was like nobody was ca- catcalling her. Yeah. Yeah, nobody was catcalling her. Nobody was like, you know. Yeah. You love me long time. You yeah. Can, you can name this one. These are, those are nice. These are nice. Okay. <laughs> These are nice. These are nice. Yeah. <laughs> We should, yeah, we should rename that. These are nice. <laughs> All right. How badly are you judging your mom off reading this book? In 1990, no. In 2020, well, yes. Well, I mean, I'm like, I'm judging myself for reading it, too. So, I mean, I'd like, I get it. Like, this was a big fucking book. Everybody loved the shit out of it. It was. It's like one of those lazy war movies, though. Yeah, I hate that's, it That's, so that's what it's like. It's exactly what it's like, and. Well, which leads into what Scarlett Johansson being in the movie. Absolutely fucking yeah, she is Paxson. Like, she be in this shit, like... Everybody loves me, right? I'm the best. What, what I think is very... Okay, so this book is... It's, it's, it's like, oh gosh, you can't... You have to wrestle with it, because um, parts of it... Like, when she talks about... She talks about the smell of gasoline in Saigon, and it feels very vital and very... Yeah. Yeah, like, it's a very you-are-there thing, and it works real well. I mean, like, I understand why I liked it when I was a kid. Again. She's done her research. It's just that she hasn't done any research about checking her fucking privilege. The bitch researches the shit out of facts, but, like, again. The like, heart isn't there. Like, the heart is, is in the wrong place. Like like I have said, and, I, again, I feel like, too, I don't, I'm kind of torn because... Like, like we were talking about. Like, there's a lot of really terrible fucking shit. Like, where, like, you know, like, own voices. Like, that hashtag is really important right now. And, like, with that American Dirt. And, like, I was talking yeah. about the fucking Katrina Aftermath bullshit. Like, seeing people that I admire. And, like, seeing these authors that 
I respect the shit out of, like, actually hurting about this. Like, I don't want to be beating a dead horse, so to speak. Like, but this book is really fucking insulting. It's I feel that it's more dangerous because it thinks it's woke. Yes, it, exactly. Like, if this book were, I mean, like, let's ignore the mammy stuff and the U.S. racial stuff. I can't even, but you Let's can't. just move to the Vietnam you, stuff. You can't ignore it, though. I mean, I'm not ignoring that. I'm just saying, like, yeah. let's just look at the Vietnam stuff. It, if, it, if this book, if Paxton were saying the word gook, I frankly think that it would be more, it would be a better book and you more know, instructive like, because then you could look at her and say, that's a bad person. You know what? But like, that's a racist. That should, like, the the army guys use an army terminology that they realistically probably would have used. Doesn't bother me as much as, like. Because the, the book knows that nice people don't say gook. What the book right. doesn't know is that nice people would also know the name of a Vietnamese person. Yeah, or that nice people all I, I don't would know. Would shut up and fucking listen to Yvonne. I mean, like, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that was the thing. Is like, she was like, I have to... Pr-. The way that the characters of, like I said, like, within sev- like within 50 pages, I had written this book off with, like, the, the treatment of... Queenie, which I hate saying. I hate saying the word. I hate I saying mean, that, Queenie. I mean, just say that's I not hate her name. She might have been. She might have loved that name. I don't know. What? But she might have loved that name. I mean, I'm just saying. No, that, but like, like no. I, I think then you'll still pick that name, which but is. But what, what I'm saying know. is like you basically picked. You watched Gone with the Wind, and you basically because isn't Queenie the name of the? No, that's um. Well, I mean, Hattie McDaniel's character is Mammy, but what, like, what's... Prissy. Prissy. But you basically picked one of these fucking names. It's a slave name. You've picked a slave name. You, like, every time that she describes... It's the help. What, whenever she describes this character, it's how fat she is. How of a hulking stalwart thing she is. Like food. It's about food a you're lot. You're describing... She makes great biscuits. I, I don't, you know, but again, it's like, you're ta- you like... You are talking about a black woman's body. Yeah. And honestly, again, this book really makes me dislike Danielle Steele because of how she handled and he, this. He also like, uses that animal language. Like, he uses the word purring. Yes. The purring, like... I think it probably also uses an animal word about exotic, Yvonne, but that I don't she's remember. Like, yeah, but, you know, Yvonne is exotic. And, like, basically, like, when she describes Yvonne, like, she's she just... She just has a fucking afro, okay? That's like, what exotic like, she Yvonne. uses everything but, like, high yellow to yeah. describe Yvonne. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's angry, and she's... I just got so upset and mad about this. That, you know, I, I I just, fucking white women, just stop it. I made the joke, and it's not a joke, but it is a joke, about, like, this is this being the white moderate that Dr. King warns about. Yes. I mean, and that's exactly what he was talking about. And that these are the people, the packs of the world, are like, oh, well, we well, should wait to a better time. Well, it's just, I mean, what, what bothers me about this is, like. It's my story. <sighs> Don't mess up my story by being Everything mad at me. is like trying to be well fucking meaning, but like you can't be well meaning and you can't be like again, I don't need I don't need some privileged white asshole explaining what civil rights is to somebody who is a black woman in Alabama. You know, it's like talking like, you know, when when letters from a jailhouse from in Montgomery are being written like fuck and I'm sorry, in 1990, Danielle Steele should have had a little bit of self-awareness about this. This was highly insulting. It was gross. And I think we're overestimating 1990. No, I'm, I, no I mean, yeah, I, I, I would like I mean, her to have had more. In 1990, yeah. 1989, like, you got to think about the shit that's coming out. And you got to do the right thing. You've got a lot of things that are really progressive and amazing happening. Mm-hmm. This is fucking bullshit. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely... I, I am definitely not arguing with you that it's bullshit. It is completely bullshit. I mean, I'm not like... I just again, think that this is what woke looked like. And by woke, I don't mean... 
um, truly awake. I mean, what well-intentioned yeah, white people? Just, this is you're you're in the vein of older, well-intentioned white people. This is what it feels like. This is a Karen book, and I hate yeah. it. So, and, and but Karen thinks that she this is, is a, so good. This is a racist ass book. Yeah, it it's, is. It's it fucking is. racist because what well, makes it? I mean, the well-intentionedness makes it poison. It's. It's terrible. This, I mean, honestly, to I would me, rather read a book than just like yeah, you know like, what? Yeah, and, I, like, and I know this is going to be like a hot fucking argument, but like, let's have it. I'd rather deal with a cat, like a Kathleen Woodowis bullshit yes. thing of like how she dealt with race in like 1974. Although I don't know. I think that that was actually the the um the the missing link, like the previous form of this, because yeah. what Kathleen Woodowis did is just pretend like it didn't happen yeah. at all. I would, you know, I just I just feel like this is so fucking condescending and pandering that it would like I would rather like have somebody be like I don't know how to deal with it, so I'm just gonna be like eh, throw my hands up. Yeah, and she doesn't like, have to be from Savannah. Yeah. That's the thing. Like she could have been she from anywhere. anywhere. Like I was like, but I'm gonna put race in it. Like, so... Well, and I, I think maybe what she was thinking, to be charitable, no. which I shouldn't be, but if she was like, well, I, I can't just, like, act like it wasn't happening. Right. I mean... But, so but she did not deal with it like, well, but, be like, yeah. hey, man, I don't know a lot about it, so I'm not gonna say a lot right. of, like, be like, I was confused. Things were... Con- you know, I don't know, like, at least put, like, a little bit of fucking, like, your right. own ignorance in there and say... Because Paxi has... Like, what's, Paxi does not have a self-awareness ever. Paxi is an expert on it all. Paxi is going to tell you about the black experience, yes. and I fucking hate her for it. Okay. Yeah. Paxi all sucks. Right. So, you're not leaving this house looking like this. Her red sandals... Oh my god, yeah, because she brought some dresses to wear in Saigon for when you go out on dates that you have your, a soldier who are not set, and they're not stationed in Saigon. They just come and take you out on dates all the time. So, I mean, she had like jeans and like t shirts and shit, but I she mean, was like she in got, ridiculous like, clothes. And, yeah. I mean, she eventually ended up in fatigues and stuff, Ugh. but yeah, I, I kept trying to imagine her because what's funny is I think this might be a flaw in the book. Um, like, it's just like the kind of book that this is. I kept trying to imagine Paxi as being a 60s girl, like, with the center parted hair. She had very long blonde hair. Yeah. And, like, the ironed hair. But I just kept seeing her as Kelly Taylor for 90210. She was so 80s. Like, yeah. Yeah, somehow she was Early still 90s, so fucking like, 80s. You, yeah. could, you could feel it. It just kind of yeah. came out of the thing. I, I, I wrote the words full metal jacket and because I, I think it's interesting to talk about. And Courtney's like, oh, great. So it's going to talk about. That's uh, fun. No, I'm going to do a thing on the website about um, war literature because we talked yeah. about that a little bit earlier. I made the mistake of watching Full Metal Jacket as an adult, and I'd never seen it as a teenager. And that is like Flowers in the Attic and Catcher in the Rye, yeah. is that you need to see it as a teenager. Because an adult, what you realize is, A, the only good part of the movie is the first third at boot camp, and B... Oh my god, Arlie Ermey is like busting in us trying to save these kids' lives. I have a I have a thing about <laughs> I don't know if we've discussed it on this podcast. I don't, honestly don't know. I'll put this fucking bottle of wine. Let's do it. Um I, about my like I do not enjoy fucking I do not enjoy Stanley Kubrick. I, oh, I don't either. I, fucking, I don't like him, and I find him cold. I fucking hate him, and I think he hates women. You are fidgeting with that fucking course group for an hour. I hate him so much. I think he hates yeah, women. I agree. Um, so I think he hates actual specific women, and some of them are Shelley Duvall. Oh god, <laughs> he, he fucking hates the shit out of her. But like, my like the point is, is like I don't like again the first like whatever of that movie is like great like with the drill sergeant and like Vincent D'Onofrio yes. freaking the fuck out like that's that's great I don't give a shit about the rest of it no because it's all bullshit um again Platoon is the better like war movie to uh, me because... the deer hunter is my war movie but okay yeah but I'm just, I'm just saying like I have like a few that I'm like well I enjoyed this this is good blah blah blah, blah. but like Full Metal Jacket is not in my like well, I movies. think that you have to watch it when you're young because if you watch it when you're an adult, what you realize is that the drill sergeant is not your enemy. The drill sergeant is probably a guy what from like what, what maybe thinking about the years. Is he from Korea? Well, what's wild about that guy is like that guy was a drill sergeant. Yeah, just like made a career doing this. I always shit. liked him, Arlie Army. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, like, here's a guy who is trying to to figure out. Yeah. He's got only a couple weeks. Because well, I mean, I never like, this is that, like I never felt like the drill sergeant was ever the bad guy. Well, like, uh, he was if you were eighteen. 
the thing I don't is, know. like, I always thought he's supposed to be like a, an agent of the oppression, and this, and this is the guy who individually he has, and this is a very like it's an abbreviated training cycle. Like they get more time now, yeah, because we're not. Well, who knows? Are we at war? I don't know. We've been at war forever. But this is a guy who he knows he only has a couple weeks to maybe get these kids to not fucking die in their first five fucking days, Peter, yeah. in Vietnam. And uh, like he's being hard on them because he's trying to save their lives, and they don't appreciate it. No, he's definitely the villain of the first part of the movie. Also, I what's know, hilarious. Like, I, I don't know. Like, to me, again, I felt like he was like, I, I always like enjoy i don't know because because you also watched it as an adult instead of like the pre I mean, who really loves that i think movie. the one that you also have to like you had to love that movie as a child I mean, almost sorry y'all i feel like again you know you had fucking like there's there are like for for all the ones that are like not the greatest ones like you do have like you have like born on the fourth of july which is a Good great man. fucking movie because like again it deals with the aftermath of like coming home which is what she's trying to do and like she keeps talking about like why are we here like sometimes you don't have to say it danielle yeah. sometimes like the Im- show don't tell danielle the implication yeah like, so... I think we all figured out when your fiancé yeah. died meaninglessly a friendly fire five days into being there that there's no fucking reason for I mean, to be there. Like, so you also, got, like, because we're Americans and it's 1990, we know that Vietnam was a fucking mistake. I you mean, can I move think on. it is this weird thing where you have these, like, this terrible war has made a dearth of amazing movies. Like you said, like, like the deer hunter. There's, you know, apocalypse now. Like there's, there's a, a lot, lot of movies, but they're not all truly like intelligently great movies. But I think that people love them more than they, I don't know. I mean, like fucking apocalypse now is kind of, it is a great movie. I don't love it. Like, I know you don't, you don't have to love no, it. No, no, like no, that's no, the no, thing. I'm not saying I had to love it. I'm just saying, you that, know, but like, you know, there's some that are, I don't know. Like anyway, I'm just saying that it tends to be that books are not, not this book. Don't get no. me wrong. The books can approach war in a way that is more clear eyed than movies can. And that the American public will not accept a movie for a long time. Um, <sighs> in, yeah. you know, after, after the war, uh, in, in, until it's been like a good 50, 60, 70 years that is as complex as what a movie will, uh, what a book will show you. Yeah. But I mean, this is not that. Also Tim O'Brien, like I thought that I was cool. There you go. Of course he did. I think I'm cool. You're something. <laughs> You're something. All right. What question are we on? We're I don't good. even know anymore. I'm, I'm like, I, I think that we okay. have lost our fucking minds on no, this No, we one. haven't. So we did the, what you're, tr- there is not enough horniness in this fucking book. That's the thing. I, I remember, okay, the funny thing is, so I remember this book. I picked oh, it partly. The question is, I'm sorry, y'all. Like, would your 12-year-old self have dog-eared any pages? I, no. no, I actually did dog your page. I remember this book as being sexy there as shit. There is no I think it was more like, like maybe the pearls. Because, no, it's clear that yeah. they are having sex. Yeah. And, I mean, she and Peter discuss it very, okay, very intelligently, yeah. very adultly. And, like, whether they should have sex, They're what do you very think about it? about you know, it. Yes, it, it, it's a sweet scene and everything. It's that the Peter's a piece of shit. I mean, he's not a piece of shit. He's just boring. Um, she has good sex with Tony. Well, but it doesn't really. But it's, like, still at the same time like they It's are. very vague. Oh, God. I think that vague. she feels that this book is supposed to be her serious book. And yeah. so she can't make it dirty. But this book, like, got panned hard. Like, people were like, she's all over the place. This is some nonsense. And it was. Yeah, they were right. I mean, like, so I, I would like to contrast it with, for example, um, Morning Glory, which was, okay, about a different war. It seems much more remote now. But oh, my God. Like, this the, book. The, the doing it in that book was hot as shit. shit. But also the war, like, the aspects of war in Morning Glory was so much more The stakes got more real. Well, like, it was just more authentic. Like, this was just, like, so, like I feel like in Morning Glory, because, again, you know how I feel about crackers. I feel like the, the stakes in Morning Glory were much more authentic and real. Like, this was just a rich white bitch playing at war. The letters um, that were written back, yeah. and, of course, you to know what we're really talking about, you had to go listen to our Morning yeah, Glory episode. Morning Glory, yeah. um, but uh, for, there's a, a hunk of, um, of Morning Glory where uh, the guy goes, yeah, yeah, he goes off to war, he goes to Guadalcanal, it's World War II, and it's just letters, and what you don't see, in, like, there's giant omissions in the letters, this and that's book, what the story is. This book is you know? so, like, this, 
Morning Glory was so much better than this book. Well, for one thing, Morning Glory had more trust in you because this book felt like it had to be like, and then I went to this, and then I went to this. Oh my god, this is just like, I mean, again, Morning Glory is like, you know what the fuck happened in World War II? This is like fucking, this This is Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, but worse. So. If Forrest Gump were a blonde lady, but not like a blonde lady who would ever have like, for example, gotten AIDS or, you know, uh, like done anything interesting. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, the, the Jenny gets fucking AIDS. And well, they say it's hepatitis, but uh, whatever. Bitch got AIDS. All right. I have a lot of Jenny issues, but anyway. So what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire? Like, can it just be a Molotov cocktail? Like, can we just fucking say that and, like, let it all burn the fuck out? I hate I, this. I, I wrestled with this harder than Courtney did because it's easier to hate a thing than it is to, like, try to figure out why you liked it. I mean, I could, I, okay, I could, again. I can understand enjoying this if I was 11. For one thing, I hadn't gotten to see most of those great Vietnam movies. Yeah. Like, because they were all way too grown for me. Ah, uh, Reading this as an adult, this is... And again... I, I agree with all of your issues After this, reading but. Palomino, which had this really kind of hyper-confident... Yeah. Like character that like not only was just like hey here I am I'm 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 good at stuff like let me show you and then like when I get too confident I have real world consequences but you know what I'm gonna get over that shit too and like just make my way and keep plugging and trucking and just like being this character that you root for Paxton is fucking terrible yeah she she is a Forrest Gump character and and the thing is okay I went to talk about this in that um. The question about would you uh, talk shit with her about the hair? I would not touch her because I was afraid I would die in Vietnam. Oh my gosh, she's such a country a... I've never been to. I hate her so much. I but hate her so much. I feel that maybe this is the unwanted other side of the Danielle Steele Mary Sue. Yes, because it is. Because we like the Danielle Steele, this hyper competent, extremely fashionable, real job having. Fuck you, doesn't yeah. need you. If she wants to marry you, well, guess what? Then, like, she made a mistake and all this. Like, lady, the backside of that is what you end up... I mean, this is almost like an object lesson in this idea of a person. It's like, oh, shit. This lady's a fucking nightmare. She's just, like, flitting through Vietnam and leaving, her, like, some bodies in her way. I just... I, I just... The way... She's so confident in a bad way. She's confident in a, I can never learn from somebody. She's confident like in a white lady way. Yeah. Is what she is. She's confident in this, like, I don't need... You know what? Like, I've had two civics courses, so mm. I don't need you to explain to me your experience, because I'm gonna tell you your experience. And let's point out, this is somebody who could have marched with Dr. King, but never did. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, we never got I mean, a chance, but she could have done I mean, it. She, I mean, Peter, you know. like, her fiance, like, Peter, the dead one, like, went and, like... Oh, the one dead one? The one dead one. The first <laughs> dead one, like, went and, like, volunteered and shit. But also, like, I feel like it's... I, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's, like, very easy, it's very easy to be, like, I'm on your side. And, like, you think about, like, the Freedom Riders and you think about the white Freedom Riders that lost their lives, that, like, did real world shit. Yeah, they put their asses on the line. And, like, and, I mean, like, they paid the ultimate and sacrifice. And Paxi did not do that. I, I hate her. Like, I viscerally hate this character. If Paxi had been in Mississippi yeah. as the clan was like rocking yeah. the bus saying, Okay, don't be fucking mad at me. Like, that'd be one yeah, thing. Like, but she never put her I, ass in the line for the racial justice cause. I hate her so much and I hate it, it, it goes She thought she deserved that from Yvonne. Just she by has, Yeah, she just thought like because I'm telling you that I'm on your side and you're why should you trust me? You know, it's the same thing of, like, basically asking Yvonne, like, I need you to put more, you need to put more emotional labor force on, like, your caring of me than I'm going to put on you. It's what you're saying. Like, yeah. for somebody, like, it's it's like when you ask somebody, like, oh, I need you to tell me how to be a better, like, blah, blah, blah. Uh. Like, no, no, fuck you. Like, stop, stop asking your you know, people of color friends, like, whatever, like, stop asking them for, like, oh, I need help with this, help with like, no, like, go and look it up, like, I just, I can't, like, I, stop asking people, stop asking people of color for free emotional labor. Yeah. 
You know, like, stop. What the fuck was Yvonne supposed to say at that point? Stop saying we need you to do more. Like, it just, I'm so, like, it's so upsetting Like, what could Yvonne have said at that point yes. besides, oh, you're right. You know what I've been like, hey, like, hey, like, please tell me about your experience. You have not earned yeah. this at all, Paxi. Mm-hmm. Like, but that's, that is, like, what is, like, the the one thing about Pax, this character, is, like, she thinks by just merely existing and because she's like, votes a certain way that she earns it. And that's, that's, again, like, when we got to that part of the book and we got to her, like, dealing with this, that's when I was like, I'm fucking done with this because I, I hate this character. I hate this certain type of character. And frankly, I guess I'm glad that it did include um, the uh, United States racial stuff because yeah. it, it was like a, a sort of a macrocosm of what was going on with the Vietnam stuff. Right. Which, I, the reason, I, I not that it's not obvious what's going on with the Vietnam stuff, but it is... Um, we're more accustomed to seeing this particular kind of, like, the Vietnam story is the American story stuff. Yeah. So it might not have been as clear had we not already been put on, on fucking high alert. I don't know. I Isn't just, that what Dr. King marched for? I just... Not for you, fucking Paxi. He did not march for you. Yeah, I was... <sighs> again, I feel like this book really, like... Like, again, like I was saying, like, seeing what people are going through with the American dirt situation and like like I said like all these things like I'm fucking done with it and it it is interesting to like when we started doing this podcast a year ago before I got involved so much with like I mean you know I've always felt like hey I've sort of got like a finger on the pulse but like being in charge of our social media is kind of the this amazing privilege that I have because I'm on there and I see every single day, like, the real world ramifications of what people of color are dealing with, with, like, RWA and, like, all these other things. And, like, it just has opened my eyes up so much more from, what you know, like, I don't know, like, you know, that's the only thing you can do as, like, especially being a nice white lady. You can fucking listen. (laughs) Yeah, is, like. You know, like, just look at it and look at it from a perspective that maybe if we had done this book a year ago, I don't know. Oh, I think when we got to the mammy, well, I think yes, there's but, like, but, you know. but you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, it, it is interesting to watch the podcast, like, evolve and yeah. stuff. Like, what I've learned um, most over the past maybe, oh, well, well, since 2016, um, obviously, it, Many of these things have not been a surprise to me, but I think I was not as aware of the damaging potential of white tears. Oh, my God. And this book is all about white tears. Well, that is the best, like, like, I have, like, you know, again, you know, I work at a small HBCU, and, like, I work with these amazing, amazing, smart as hell women of color, and it's, like, one of the, like, we have this joke about... You know, <laughs> like, if we could bottle my tears, you know, like. We could so, use them whenever we wanted yeah, to. Like, yeah, yeah, we could weaponize them. And so, like, I, you know, I count myself very fortunate, like, to work where I work and that I get this really uh, hard, I don't know, like, I'm not saying that, like, I'm more whatever than other people, but, like, you know, my job is amazing in this I respect, think that we so. all honestly um, deserve and do not get an opportunity we who have grown up with all this privilege I'm sorry I said we meaning yeah. everybody um, but we me and you we all deserve an opportunity to be minorities yeah. to either like to study abroad in a place that um, is where the, like, I mean, white people yeah. or like to work in a place or and I have actually never had that yeah. experience long term it was funny when I was on um and this is a tiny experience, a tiny itty bitty little grain, um, being on um, a women's subway car in Mexico City. <laughs> I've never been so yeah. tall and so white, and it was <laughs> people were like the whole entire car was staring yeah. at me, and it was it was the strangest experience to me because I had never been the only I one. I kind of love something. like yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know, and I'm like I don't think I could ever go to like. A PWR. Like, I don't think I could go to a predominantly white institute because, like, I love the shit out of what I do. And, like, I love being able to just 
know how to listen. And I think that's the best thing about my job is like, it has, like I said, it has afforded me the privilege of learning how to shut the fuck up. You know what? Uh, let me express what my privilege just did right now. I um, did not know that there was a, a an acronym for um, just everywhere else. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's, that's the thing is like I know now like to like put that in because a lot of people don't know you know. No, like, I, I I did yeah. not, and I would have not. Uh, it would have taken me a minute to come up with that acronym. I did not know that that was an acronym. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you for your um. Go support your wisdom, Courtney. My 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 sign off for this this thing <laughs> is go support your local HBCUs because in addition to having. Obviously, you know, African-American and black students, you're going to have a lot of other students of color and HBCUs are producing the most in like STEM doctorates and STEM, you know, masters. So support them. Yeah. And it would be to your benefit to go um, just be somewhere where you are not. not, Yeah. Yeah. um, if, 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 If you're white. If, if you are a, not white, you are very familiar with this yeah. feeling, so please ignore yeah, exactly, that right. recommendation. You can just check that off your yeah. <laughs> checklist if you are already. White, though, go, if go you're white, you should go somewhere, somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know, it's, I think it's the best educational experience you can have. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it teaches you the most important skill you're going to have as a white person, which is shut up and listen. Yes. All right, shut up, bitches. And we will see you on our next 4 for 40, which I hope oh God. we were all like better, but I don't know yet because we haven't read it. We haven't read it yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, anything could happen. Be sure to check us out, um, though, on our Twitter with B-Tipplers and then Instagram, Bodice Tipplers, Facebook, Bodice Tipplers. Send us an email, BodiceTipplers at gmail.com. Somebody did. I know you got, Sarah. Y'all. Somebody encourage my boat talk. Somebody loves Tara's boat talk. I love you, Elaine. It's all over. You're the best. It's all over. We're not going to hear nothing but boats from you. She says I should do. You can't do that on a blank. As in, like, you can't do that on a Vietnam War. Or. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) You can't do that on a horsey. Uh, We also have to thank our, we have, we have, yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of really cool things that we'll add on and put on our next episode our patreons oh yeah yeah um just so that you know um yeah we've got a lot of patreon shout outs coming out but so also many. any of you who have subscribed will be able to watch us after going through this fucking book being this keyed up and having drunk this much red wine we're gonna play, we'll play every center club, club game, center club game. you can give any amount of money and get uh, exclusive one access dollar episode is gonna be fucked up because we are all keyed up about our white privilege and confused and we're gonna have to let it out somewhere I'm a mixture of a Christy and a Stacy. I'll say I am also a um You're so Christy now. Marriott. No, I'm not. I've never sported in my life on purpose. But she's like decisive. She's like very leader. I'm decisive? You are like you're now. No, I'm just intense. That's not decisive. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, like 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 um anxiety ridden. That that's not the same so, thing as decisive. When I was growing up, I was like my favorites. When I was growing up, I loved the shit. I love Christy and I love Dawn. I just wanted to be Claudia, but I knew well, I would never be Claudia. Everybody wanted to be fucking Claudia. I Claudia's know you the can't be Claudia. Yeah, no Claudias. Tell us who you are on all of our social media or send us an email. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to stop this fucking. Podcast. Yes. All right. All right. Peace out. Oh, oh, oh. Peace out. Uh. Uh. Bodice Tipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. <laughs>